Hi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. Welcome to another session of Hanums with Raxer. My name is Maria Hernandez, part of the developer relation team at RAC. And here with me is Jose Marcelino, our solution architect. Hi Jose, how are you doing? Hi everyone. Developer relation team at RAC. Are you excited for today's session? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got a great it's amazing, amazing. amazing. Uh, um, um, way for the way from Mexico. Exactly. Uh, it's something, something which we've worked for a long time. It's I know that it's going to be pretty interesting. For those who are joining for the first time, Hanons with Rockstar is a place to give a voice to all those passionate IoT developers who are building incredible things with Rock products. During this session, we are really chatting with about cool projects, tips and tricks to keep in mind, hacks, and many Rockstarx experiences. For today's session, we, we have invited a person who is super passionate about communities and open source hardware. And this is making me very excited because I'm sure the session will be super fun and interesting. His name is Eduardo Contreras, but everyone knows him as Güero. Welcome, Güero. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Thank you for the introduction. How are you doing? Everything fine. Now. Everything fine now here. Everything fine? That is good. For everyone who is connected, eh, please feel free to ask a question if you have any doubt uh, during the session. I will keep an eye on the chat every time that a question pops up. So, uh, why don't we start by just telling us a bit about yourself, about your background, education, sort of how you got into the electronics world and IoT world. Okay. Okay. Sure, sure. Well, well, everything, everything started, started in, the, in, the, in the high school. I studied, I studied mechatronic technician and I, I learned there about programming from assembly. That was my first programming language uh, for microcontrollers. I mean, my first uh, assembly program was made for PIX for a microchip microcontroller, uh, a peak uh, 16, I think. And then I keep moving, uh, I, I keep moving through microcontrollers and languages. All my high school, I keep learning about languages. I mean, my first language was assembly and then basic and then went to C. And then I, I continue learning C and I stay there <laughs> for, for a while. And also, also always on the 8-bit structure. Then I I decided that I didn't want to be a mechatronic engineer. I decided to be an electronic engineer because uh, the thing about mechatronics is like you have mechanics, in, uh, IT, and electronic, and it's like a really big picture of everything. And I prefer to be more uh, accurate, more precise on the thing that I I, I want to learn. So I, I, I did like really, I really liked the idea of studying IT or electronics. So I decided electronics because it's the base of everything. So all the IT information, all the IT thing, I mean, all the computers, all the, all the systems came from electronics. So I think, I, I thought that it was like a good path to follow and to learn about. And well, I started studying the electronic engineering in the Institute of uh, the Technic. Well, the Instituto Mex. Uh, how it's called? It is Instituto Tecnológico de Aguascalientes, which is like the MIT. <laughs> I mean, by the name, it's like uh, instead of Massachusetts, it's from Aguascalientes, which is the town where I I, I was born, and. And then I continue learning by myself because in the in in the in the degree I didn't have any any approach to thirty two by uh, the thirty two bit microcontroller or or sixteen bit microcontroller all was like eight bit they stay there and they just teach that so I learned a lot of C and I learned a lot of electronics from RF to to analogic so from uh, doing some sensing and blah, blah, blah. But it was like, um, like a little bit too basic. And I wanted to, to learn more about new microcontrollers because they were using like 
uh, uh, really old microcontrollers and so. So I start to learning by myself uh, about their ARM. Uh, I learned about uh, DSP and some DSP, DSP solutions and start doing projects by my own. And also I get interested on the on all the line uh, on the all the Linux foundation and all the distro, uh, different distros. I learned how to change uh, operating systems since I was like. I, I think 16 years old, 17 years old. So uh, I keep learning about uh, operating systems. I mean, I don't feel like I, I know a lot of operating system, but I can work in any system that I want now. So it's pretty, it's pretty good for me right now because it's like I have Windows right here. Right, right now I'm using Windows, but that's like for gaming stuff. But in my all the day to day work, I use I almost always use Mac OS because I really love the Unix interface and all the, ter the, the terminal. Also, for another kind of projects, I usually use uh, Linux uh, for, since Raspbian or or it could be like mm, how do you call? I just forgot the name. Mm, well different kind of distros for uh, well linux distros for embedded systems for example the uh, octo jocto it's a uh, it's one operating system that I, I use a lot and well that brings me to the other point as long as i wanted to be learning about more microcontrollers uh, i try to buy some stuff from the internet and then try try it by my own and then try to connect with people who also were interested on this part. So that's when uh, when this association, the Inventors House came around and I, I, I meet the correct people so I can keep learning and do some projects. So yeah, that's kind of my history, my, my brief or how did I get, did I get in all this part, in all this part? Uh, the, you, uh, you just mentioned that you started doing like playing with diff different like distro of Linux when you were 16 well, years old. There was a well, there was a thing like I don't know like make you think I want to be an engineer when you was a kid. Like there was a thought that that make you want to be an well, engineer. My father, uh, well, my father uh, uh, here. Uh, okay. So, so, so it all. Okay. Okay. The telecommunication part. telecommunication he works for our, he works for right, our, now, uh, right now for uh, 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 well, he has a lot of the around, the around the house. house also, also right, right here, here, I have I have my desktop, a lot of a lot of things I had to get it to me because because it, it, I, I have this solar solar solaring station I have, I have, I have, I have. so yeah, so it, yeah it, 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 it was kind of easy for me getting involved getting involved in he, he told me something, me something and, then and he, he like rode with, rode with me. me. I didn't, I didn't know. know. Well, it's, well, kind, it's of kind of. Kind of, of that, that, that is amazing. Super yeah, nice yeah, to grow yeah. with that environment. Amazing, amazing. And how is actually right now Mexico in the development and development of new technologies? Do you consider it has been growing during the last years? Well, well. I would I wouldn't say that, that it's like like creating new technology. technology. There are more, there are more uh, implementing this technology. Uh, th that's because uh, a lot of things done they are are not made uh, here. Like for example, since the silicon, uh, uh, all the all the silicon fa uh, factories, also all the all the design of silicon it's made here but they don't design as well they just put places uh, they, they they just uh, like uh, put together uh, some kind of silicon things i mean they don't do design so they do not create or don't do not sell patents or do not create by their own i like to see us like uh, some kind of a uh, people who want to bring technology and implement it because right now in Mexico all the development is like little low I think I mean there's a lot of companies who develop but here in Mexico it's more common to have 
uh, a company who uh, do all the factory stuff where you can assemble uh, assembly some things or you can assembly for example uh, um, cars you can assembly some pcbs you can assembly because all the all the uh, like all, all the works that are done in a factory it's like really really cheap here in mexico so it's more like we are more trending to do some implementations instead of doing some designs and right now uh, i mean in the for five years i have seen a lot of companies that grew up designing and giving some proposals which is really cool and i really love it i mean one of one one of that example is electronic ads where I, I i work and we try to develop and to implement technology we we are not in the position right now to create technology so i see us like yeah we are starting we are heading to create technology but we need to first implement in a good way that technology i think that was one of the reasons you create uh, you decide to found uh, electronic cat that was uh, what was that particular gap that you notice in the electronic community you, that you were trying to feel when you decide okay we have to make this for the community well uh, well uh, uh, to to go to good for I learned a lot of, of, of the, a lot of things because of the community. For example, when the ESP8266 came around, I learned a lot of uh, Lua language uh, because of the community. And then I learned a lot of, for example, when I try to get around the Raspberry Pi, I get a, a lot of samples. I get a lot of uh, issues rip, uh, that it was like already solutioned uh, on, on the web. So I really felt like the community was giving me to was giving me a lot of things, and I was learning a lot around all the community, and I wanted that to. I and I I learned all these things because I I knew how to read in English, you know, and I mean it's not perfect, but I can understand things and whatever. So right now, well, in that in that position, I was like, man, I won that community in spanish because a lot of people could have this information could have this a uh, feeling of sharing this feeling of teaching something around a product and 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 i mean i don't want to be like oh this is the the product and you need to buy it and it's the only way to do it i mean it's like okay you have these things you can do these things you can you, you don't have these things well you can work around and have this other thing and then you you bring all together and and that idea uh, it really really like well i really really like it because it's like you're able to do whatever you want for example, for example uh, just, a example, just a little example just a little this guy from uh, australia i think it's called greg david i met him in chicago on the kickon from 2019 and for example, he has a video where he explains how to route uh, some, how to do layout for for DDR3 uh, RAM memory, and it's like that's a high level stuff for layout, right? And he's just sharing, and and maybe it's not the best way to explain something, or maybe it's the best way to explain something. But I learn a lot. I understand the things, and now I feel like I can do it and then i can test it on my own so uh, to feel that empowerment i think it's like like the way to develop technology to be not to, to not being afraid of technology just to implement and, and get failures and get got good good stuff coming you know yeah Ter, i agree with you and how how could you like describe how uh, how were those first months working on the idea like knowing your co-founders -co or you previously know them like how was that experience i think that is pretty interesting when you are studying a startup or a, or a company yeah, and a new project yeah it, yeah it was not weird though because we really didn't know what was gonna happen <laughs> we started like like we get together in this group work called the inventor's house and we start doing projects and we keep doing projects. I mean, we did for the first PCB and and then one Andres Abbas, one, 
one one cloud founder says like, okay, I, I know this web page where we can put the hardware and it can be sold. And we put that information, we did the documentation, uh, he, did, he, uh, he did it in Spanish, I translated it to English, and our first client was in Germany. So that, that, gave us, that, that gave us a lot of confidence about how the products can be sold and can be delivered and can be written by, can, can, can be read, uh, by any, anyone and can be useful for anyone. So we try to keep that line and we didn't thought that we would found a, a company, but we continue with the projects and it came the time to say like, okay, we need to, to sell this amount of money. We have this amount of, of things that that's going through. We need to found a company because we need to do some, some bills, you know? And now uh, some invoices, some, some, some requirements for the bank accounts and okay, let's do a company. And we started without knowing something about companies. I mean, we were just uh, three electronic engineers and one computer science uh, uh, engineer. So we start to read, we start to ask, we start to, to see what's going on, right? But that's what, that's what the way that it, that it was born the electronic cards it, it that's the way that it just it just flow i mean um, it was so natural <laughs> like okay we want to do this yeah we need to do this okay let's do this and then ah okay we want to sell things okay we need to do this okay we want to be a company we need to do this and it, it has been like learning a lot of stuff uh, learning from mistakes uh, learning from good things and yeah, here we are five years later, almost five years. <laughs> that is amazing. It's it's pretty nice to to hear like those his those stories when you start like the, something that just started like in a project because you wanted to contribute to a, a, to the Hispanic community to get a start in electronics, and that then five years later you have like a, a company who we who is building incredible things. So thank congratulations you. Thank you. for that. Thank you. And will you, do you say that you start in that co-working hacker space that is the inventor house? Mm, what advantage would you say uh, to get started working in a shared space? Like did, did this did make the difference like in the environment that you were developing around the project and around the company? Yeah, yeah, it it, it it did all the difference because in all the uh, how do you call in in trampers in in interpreters I don't know how to say it uh, all the people who want to do like a startup they also say oh we want to we, I have the idea but you have to work and I want to I want you to have the 50% because I I had I got the idea and then we can share all the benefits of the company and blah 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 and it's like we we never thought about that we also always thought about the products we always thought about working we always thought about how the things will be done and that's was that was the difference we didn't have that, that this idea of okay we have this idea and we have this idea in mind and we are gonna go we are gonna present this whole project to an, an investor and he will give us money and we will bring a big company and i mean it's a good way to do it it because a lot of a lot of companies have started in that way and a lot of companies have started and go down i mean it depends on a lot of factors it's not like it, 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 that that's a bad idea right but here we can do whatever we want when we want it because we don't own money for anybody. So having this kind of approach of just doing the, the stuff that works or it works or it doesn't work. So in that way, it's like it needs to be working and you just focus on that. And you can be uh, with people uh, who think the same way in a co-work or in a in a hacker space where people want to be there because they want to be doing projects who needs to be who, who will and they need their projects to be working so it's the kind of same um, psychological idea i don't know how to say it but uh, the idea of 
be working to to sell things is different than I have an NDE and I, I need to have some investors and I, I will uh, be an intern er, interpret I don't know how to say it. but <laughs> I, I, I remember how it, it is worked uh, how it is uh, written but I don't know how to to, to say it but yeah it, I, it doesn't matter that that is like a thing like you have an idea and you make it because you want it and then when you when you make it and you like start spreading the word about it you you get start getting people interested about it and then you can make something uh, based on that that is what you made this is something like crowdfunding campaigns like people just launch a project and and they build like a completed idea and then people who who are interested in the idea pay money before get that product yeah. just because yeah. they trust in the people who is making this kind of projects because they think they're interesting or because they can they share the vision that the person have so which is amazing and well, I have also a question like the did uh, did the covid 19 affect you as a company do you have to reinvent yourself in a certain way well well it it, 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 it affected it affect because all because the, all the were, were like, were like hand, 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 I, I, I always like halt and we needed to do a plan i mean we prevent this situation since february because all our providers uh, all our suppliers are from china and we realized all the situation on china since february so we decided to get savings to get a plan for months and when the COVID started in mexico we start to do all the I think I think we were like three weeks or two weeks before uh, the the pandemic started in Mexico officially. We had all our people working already in their home uh, three weeks uh, before. Uh, also, we did this plan of okay, we had this amount of money. If nothing, if if nothing gets sell, if not if nothing get close on our around the closed projects around the industry, uh, we can survive this amount of time. So we need to settle down. We need to, to see how close things and keep working. And all the company always was working half like uh, in home, in office. So it's not any news for the people who work with us or for us to be working uh, from home. And also, all the people in the company have their own laptops. I mean, we provide the laptops, but they have laptops. It was really easy just to, okay, take your laptop and work from home, as you have done before. And we have uh, some tools like the chat, the, 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 the chat from for, for the company. We have this uh, Sana project where we can follow all the all the all the tasks that everybody have and where does it get like a, a conflict like for example i can do this because he he had he hadn't finished this part so we can kind of move all the switch to to a, a from home company but we couldn't do that with production because right now we have a, a production a production line, a really short production line where we assemble the PCBs that we sell and we produce all the products that we that we sell from the products that are on the store, from products that are sold for specific projects. So the production line get uh, got halted all all the production line for like one month or three weeks, I think. But as as long as we prevent that to be to be happening, uh, we decide to get overproduce about the products that we had. So it didn't affect us as well. So yeah, it it affects us, but we did all the planning for this stuff, and it well, it was a good year after all for us. I mean, we. I mean, we uh, we growing, uh, growing, getting projects outside, getting outside, 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 outside,
keyboards, new so it, it has been a good so it, it has been a good deal so far. That is that is cool because there are some people there are companies that didn't have the same luck that many of the other companies have. And it's that you just say it's just like keep fighting, uh, trying to find the the best strategies in order to to keep working on the things that we want to keep working. So what do how how do you the how do the projects created by electronic cats contribute to the resolution of global challenges? What do you can say is about that? Well, well, I, I can't <laughs> so much because like it's like a really really open question <laughs> because the problematics are around the globe. It's like a lot of things since people who doesn't have any food with people who doesn't have any water. You know, it's like a whole world <laughs> of, of problems. So we wanted to focus on the people who want to learn more about technology and are and are and they are not able to they they are not they they're not able to to learn about it and not because uh, they not because they don't want or they don't have the capacity because they don't have the money for example so we believe in sharing in sharing the information in sharing that everybody or anybody who has a computer, because that's another topic. No, not 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 everybody has a computer, but at least the people who 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 achieve to have a computer, they can access to the information to learn things, and that's why we focus on Kika, because you can download it and you don't need to do nothing about cracking or that stuff. You can have it for free, and you can learn for free from there. And also Python, for example, you can do a lot of things with Python. Also, uh, 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 the G G GCC toolchain, you can do a lot of things with it. And you can do professional things and sell it to get a better lifestyle. So I think we try, we are trying to help that that specific kind of problem because it's not helping everybody. We need to be realistic, and that's like all the, if you see the whole big picture it's just a little bit of of, of a help definitely and so in summary how what what things you will say that made it possible for electronic cats to preserve in this competitive market of electronics well <laughs> first of all here in mexico there are not such uh, a lot of companies who do design. So that's one of our disadvantages or advantages. I don't know how to say it because if you don't have like a competitor, you don't have to something to watch on. And for example, we when we compare us to another company, we need to, to focus on Adafruit, Arduino, and not to compete, but for to learn something from them and also for, from a smartphone, right? So it's kind of, uh, we have a better better prices here in Mexico than any other company because we produce here. And when you order something from from outside, you get a lot of taxes to be paid. For. So when you you buy from here, you can just get an invoice for Mexico, pay in in, in Mexican pesos, and then and and then you have the product. And I mean, we have similar prices from Adafruit or for from a smartphone but the difference is that you have all the documentation in spanish and also all the all here in mexico right so i think that's like a big uh, a big advantage that we have here in mexico and latin america but also we have this area where that we that we, we don't do not publish that a lot which is the project development so a lot of people like to work with us from the US uh, because we can do, for example, Electronic Arts has the, capa the capability of producing 4,000 boards uh, for a month in the short uh, line of, of assembly, PCB, or PCB assembly. So when they want to build an embedded system and they search for, for example, for China from they first of all get the this barrier of languages 
and here in Mexico, it's like more common to well, it's more common to, to speak English and to get understanding by by the USA people and with Mexican people. And also, uh, we have this uh, agreement of all of the Canada, Mexico, and, and 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 USA, where we can trade some things, uh, well, some some kind of boards and some kind of technology without paying some taxes and blah blah blah. Uh, well, it doesn't apply every uh, to every every board, but, right, but okay, it, but it's, but it's kind, kind of, of better. Of better. And also, and also, a lot of a lot of people in the, in the US, US they don't they don't want to produce produce something right now because because it's, it's related to security. To security. So, so they, they can offer some product to the government to to some companies that uh, were manufacturing in China. So they looked at us. So, so in that. In that all the all the shipments, all the development, all the things, and all the NDAs can be seen in a better way because all the legal stuff it's like easier. Yeah, everything is local, so it's easier for Mexican people to to reach out to us and just make a project uh, with electronic cats, which is super nice. But also, do you do you provide like uh, shipments to other other countries in Latin America as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Super amazing. Mm -hmm. And can you share us a little bit more about the long term goals or upcoming projects? Is there is something secret that you are working on that you want to share with our community? Well, well, secret, like secret, secret, we don't have because all, all, always we you can search on our social media and so and we try to publish everything that we do. Uh, right now, I have a project where uh, I, I designed this uh, USB PD, a power delivery sink, where you can drag up to 20 volts and 5 amperes uh, from any PD source, or, or you can uh, ask for 12 volts or 9 volts, 3 amperes, 2 amperes, 1 ampere. And we are gonna release that. I mean, I think into two or three months. Uh, it is already on production, so uh, we are going to do some testing. We are gonna do some some a uh, lot load testings and so. And this is like one product that I think it's gonna be a game challenger here in Mexico at, at least because the power delivery. Uh, technology it's already available in all cell phones in all charger in all cell phones chargers in all laptop charger for example i have here my my laptop charger which is like a really thin uh, charger and it can deliver up to 15 volts and 1.5 amperes not 3, 3 amperes so it's like a lot of power that you can have on your lab and for example, for I think that for universities, for for people who want to be hobbyists and they don't want to buy a, a big like a big um, power supply a uh, power supply bench where you can move the the the, the triggers and, and everything, and you need like twenty volts and five amperes. It's like you can drag it from your daily charger. So I think it's kind of. Well, we need to see the, the the market, right? But at least for me, it will be really handful. And also, we have this a uh, vast frontier, which is like our proposal for a AI development, where we are uh, developing this with a rack module. I will talk more later if you want me to. Uh, but it is it this this module. It's really interesting because it has the NRF fifty two eighty forty which is a really cool and mainstream microcontroller right now, which has Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth 4, obviously, and all the virtual compatibility. And also, it has a chip, a uh, LoRa chip. And this chip, well, this LoRa chip, it's uh, the newest one from Semtech, which is the SX1262. And it has a lot of good benefits to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the board. So this is our proposal to get into, get, to get involved into, into the, into the machine learning on microcontrollers. And also this is an approach, a different approach because we have this proposal, this proposal is in ours. I mean, this, this topic of machine learning on microcontrollers has 
being developing for some years right now. And what we are trying to do is we realize that Adafruit has its own core for machine learning and its own do, way to do it. And Arduino has its own way to do it. And we believe that the way that Arduino is doing, it's kind of better because the, uh, where the core is based on, because it's based on embed, embed us. And all the machine learning stuff on embed us is like more developed right now than in the Arduino core. And Adafruit is keeping with Arduino core. So what we did was to, to mix them up and to have all the good stuff that Adafruit has, because it has a lot of good stuff. I mean, it has a, a really cool tools about software to, to do, download all the information. If you break the, the, the bootloader, you can re reprogram it with a software and whatever in the Arduino IDE. And also we wanted to, to be a, to being on the embed embed system around the core of Arduino. So that's what we are up to right now. And right now it, it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, it right now it, it is working like the blink and so, but we need to see, well, I need to settle down and get coding <laughs> with, with my partner. So we get this working in a good way. And we we want this to be to be released in some months because there's we implemented some sensors right there on the board. So there's a lot of examples right there on, in, in the internet. Right now, there's a lot of samples. Uh, there's a lot of samples of how to use these sensors to do machine learning. So we are not doing everything from scratch, but we are trying to get better. Thanks for sharing that every, uh, that nothing is working on. <laughs> no, 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 that's perfect. But uh, yeah. yeah, you, I, I, I am excited about this for. Uh, I really, I really wanted to to test it right now. Please send me a send me one as soon as you I get it win. released. Please, I will not to test it. <laughs> and so. now that you say like a scratch, uh, what advice can you give to those who are studying an IoT project? from scratch. What are the things that to consider when implementing an IoT solution? You're a company that make this, so I think you are a good person to to give us like some suggestions for, for that. Well, first well, of all, know your project, know your necessities, know the necessities of your client. If you don't know this, you don't know where you're going to. You need to first get all the information of it around your project and then you can decide how to implement something you need to be like really really good at seeing the kind of problems and how to solve uh, to get the solution and i mean this is kind of, this sounds kind of uh, like oh yeah you need to be good no, but you need to be more analytic when the problem the problem gets to uh, to you because for example i am a really really a lover of the lora technology but that doesn't mean that I will use LoRa for everything because it's not intended to. It is just to for a kind of a certain kind of projects that they uh, it will work in a good way. As 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 long as, for example, uh, Wi-Fi, for example, for the 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 big uh, bandwidth you have for for transmit data or having updates or having a, a good connection to the internet. Also implement against Ethernet. It's a good way to go because there's a lot of things going on around Ethernet. For example, the PoE plus, it's a good standard. You can do a lot of things around the Internet of things. And you can say, ah, but it's Ethernet. Yeah, it's Ethernet. <laughs> it's not that simple. I mean, it's like real good technology for some projects. And first of all, you need to characterize your project. You need to see how the problem is going to be solved. And if you need to use battery or not, you need to be the you, you need to be aware of the power, power budget. And then with all this information, how how many data we, you will be sending? How 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 much of important is to be to have that data on the server? Because if you need like a one hundred percent, well, that's impossible. But if you want like eighty percent or ninety percent of all the the things going on working as well. Well, you need to pay for cell phone companies because it's like the more proven technology right now. Because even the, the Wi-Fi can can get failed, right? And for example, right in your home, it's like we don't have any problem. But when you have a, a really 
hard situation where a live a life depends on or you have a really tough situation in a in a, a, in a controlled environment or something you need to have a good uh, a good data data transferring so you need to be aware of these all these points and all the, the benefits and all the all the disadvantages of each technology so you can select the correct one and then you can learn about it also what i suggest always is okay you can do projects by your own learn about the technology but only when you have the project and you need it to be working like it needs to be working it's when you learn about the technology in other in other words if you don't see a project re, a real project and, and and the real problems you won't you won't know all the technology disadvantages so learn the technology that you need to solution to you need you need it to to get the solution of something definitely we have to know the the technology that we want to implement in order to to achieve something from from the technology that we are applying so yeah thanks for for sharing those suggestions to, to those who are starting an, an iot project from scratch and this may be a hard question but which of all the projects you have done which is the one that you are most proud of which is the one that was hardest and which was the one that you enjoy most well well <laughs> the most, the most proud, proud that has uh, had an uh, impact over people or the most proud that has an uh, impact over te technician uh, information for example because it's like i have one project which is the pico sat sat satellites which is not that technological advantage i mean it has lora it has an arduino uh, arduino pro mini it has some sensors and it's kind of simple but it has a, a big impact around a, a, a lot of people i mean a lot of 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 young uh, young people who were uh, studying the high school and they try and they, they i mean this project uh, was born in 2000, 2016 and we keep doing it like for three or four years uh, and that project was intended to 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 get more people interest on the engineers on physics on implementing new things uh in in your community with technology and to learn that even when you are like a nurse you can learn how to solder you can learn about physics and you can launch your own pico satellite and a lot of for example a lot of women who were nurses uh changed the idea uh, from being te a nurse technician to be an engineer an industrial engineer uh electronic engineer we we saw a lot of people changing their mind about the what they wanted to be doing in their lives because they understand a lot of things that they they didn't were be they didn't were aware of it i mean they didn't even know that it existed it's like oh yeah me my cell phone has bluetooth but you know how the bluetooth works no and then they learn and oh i understand now and i i got more interest and i want to be doing this for my life i mean it's like really really good to to hear that from from them or a lot of people also say like okay i learned electronics i i i i know that i don't want to do that for my life because i hate it okay that's perfect but it gave to you an impact and and for example that's like the biggest project that i have that made an impact over me because it's like you learn about them and they learn about it from you and it's like it's hard to tell but when they find their own sat satellite they they feel like they accomplish a mission they feel it's it's all the trouble for 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 each mission and also for each people that we have to 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 teach of electronics and so so yeah that's like most proud project that i have for example but in the social part on the technician in in the technician part i have like some carriers for some system of a module on a module stuff which is like grabbing a computer 
a, a module which is uh, all a computer and doing a, a little motherboard. And that, that kind of projects uh, are for, I cannot talk much about it, but that's for a private company in the US. And we are doing... NDAs, NDAs. <laughs> yeah, well, I can talk that we are provided from there, from, from them. Um, and also that we did like, for example, a, a switch gigabit for them. I did some PoE plus uh, splitter there. I did also some uh, some USB hub but 3.0 with some mechanical connect weird connectors there. Also some, for example, right now the, the these little motherboards has a lot of things going on there, and also learn a lot of USB C, USB 3.0, USB 2.0 multiplexers, blah blah blah. But that's like a like a bit, really bit really really big project that I really proud of it. I cannot show it, but it's like a a big proud from me. <laughs> And can I ask? Can um, I ask did you use SkyCat did you use for SkyCat that? for that? Yeah, commercial, project, yeah, commercial project. Yeah, also for yeah, also for. I have another. I have another. It's called. Mm. It's called. I should mention it. I should mention it. But Maria, we, we are working in another oh. hunter cat. Well, if you don't know, we have this hunter cat, which is a, a device who can which can uh, detect if you're gonna be skimmed or you're credit card or debit card will be cloned by the max drive. We are working on the second version. We are going to release it soon, but this is like a, a really big deal because, well, a big deal for us because it's like a hundred cut for NFC. And we did all the antenna calculations and all the uh, impedance uh, calculations and all the circuit impedance with the capacitors and inductors and whatever in KiCad. And it's like a big deal for me because it's also, I did all the calculations, all the mathematical calculations and then plus into, give it to the, to the KiCad configuration and it all just work it out, it just work it well. And yeah, that's another project that I'm really proud of because I did all the air ref stuff by my own. And it's the first one that I do from the antenna to the chip and everything, all the air ref front end and, also all the things that it, it needs to and it is working right now <laughs> so so yeah all these kind of uh, all these projects all the projects that we do we we do it in kika because some if we want to pu public them or publish them or something we can do it in in a good way and also it's like to have all in the same way because for example i know how to use cadence i know how to well uh, orcad or or, or Allegro. Also, I know how to use Altium. I know how to use uh, even uh, this Eagle. But I focus on KiCad because I have seen a lot of things, are really cool things. For example, this, uh, this computer, uh, the, this open source computer, I don't remember the name, but it is all based on KiCad. And also all the work from Olimex, which is a, a company from the US, they work everything in KiCad since a lot of years. So yeah, you, you can use KiCad for a professional way too. Do you use the nightly or the stable version? No, I use the stable version. <laughs> I, I I have in one computer the stable version, and then I have the nightly build here in my in my uh, Windows computer because it's like oh, but this is cool, this is new, this is I'm a big fan of of finding books. Also, I, when, when when this is the this is another laptop. But the first laptop that I have with Apple, uh, well, Mac OS, I was one of the first testers of operating systems. Not because I was like a developer, but because I, I wanted to do some reports and whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Nylis. Super. And now let's get the start talking a little bit more about Rack Wireless. What about, what do you, when did, when did you first learn about us and why did you choose Rack Wireless over other competitors in the market? I think the first, I don't remember if it was 2016 or 17, uh, I don't remember. But I find, uh, I found out Rack Wireless because I was looking for some 
supplier which has uh, some GPS solution around LoRa. Because we did need for a big project here in Mexico, uh, uh, 6,500 uh, 6, 6, uh, uh, GPS modules for a big project here in Mexico. It was in like a, a, a old Republic uh, project kind of. And I decided to, to, to get around all the sensors and I, I reach out for a lot of companies. But the only company, the unique company that did respond me with a, a real quotation, and then I could buy a GPS and do some testings and, and so, it was Rack Wireless. And even I, when I first ordered the Rack Wireless module, I, I think I ordered from AliExpress or something because I didn't have the contact from Ken, but then I reached out for Ken Yu in, 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 in Gmail or something in the mail. And because I had the, this GPS workings uh, with this GPS working, but it didn't, it, the finger wasn't working the way that I wanted because it was doing all the Cayenne stuff and whatever, but I wanted to change the frequencies. And for the, the finger that they had at that moment, they only had like one band, one, one band for, for, for sending data. So he put me in contact with some developers. Uh, I think it, it wasn't Harry, but uh, I, have, I have him in the mail. But yeah, uh, the, the thing is that at the final point, they sent me, or I don't know if I find out in the internet, but I think, I think they sent me the, the, this uh, KL project and I start modifying it and I get the GPS working the way that we wanted because it was working really cool. But we wanted to be working in a different way to be waking up on the accelerometer and then just sending the information of the of the of the GPS and if a collision was happening, uh, just change the information. And so I, I, in that moment, I realized that Rack was the only company that gave me the the, the prototypes that could supply that amount of, of prototypes in some kind of, of, of time, but they, they, they were able at that moment. I mean, I know Rack right now it's like bigger than, than four years, I think. <laughs> three years three ago. Years ago yeah. Three years ago, yeah. And, and I, I truly that moment, just get confidence about buying things from you because it was like, they respond me every time that I, I had a doubt. They, uh, they allowed me to get the source code so I can modify it in my own way. And they are trying to do good stuff. For example, this module, it was the Rack 8011, which is based in STM32. And we tried both ways. Uh, I tried the, I tried the, the this, this, this scale uh, situation. And my partner tried the Arduino solution because all the GPS, all the sensors and everything was done already on Arduino. And we had a Lora one library already running on Arduino environment. So he went through that part and we, I went through the KL part and both at, at the final stage, both worked. And that was when we did this first port of rack module to Arduino, which you can find on STM Duino uh, project. And that's the first LoRa module uh, that was poured uh, from Rack to, to Arduino uh, in, a, in, a, in a repo. Then I, uh, then I keep talking with Ken and we, we keep talking, I mean, in which <laughs> and, and for example, he sent me some boards to get testing because also, uh, I think I have it right here. Hey, look, I think I have it here. Yeah, he gave me some some boards for keep doing some developments. For example, here you can see this Arduino shape, Arduino Uno shape with the Rack eighty eleven. And for example, I I have a lot of things going through this part, but we stopped the developing in this model because we find out that you have this. Rack forty two sixty 
something, <laughs> which is the base of bus one. And we moved to that part because we, we did thought that it was better for our environment. Yeah, that, that, that specific part. <laughs> uh, well, we focus on that, on that part, part. And, and well, the development of this Rack 8011 keeps going. If something gets an issue, we try to, to solve it. But we stopped using this model to change to the, this other model of, of, of the bus one. Also, see, he sent me this board from ASRock because he knew that I, I love the PSOC environment. And, and yeah, that's like being... Well, he told me that I was like a rock star in that moment. <laughs> and we have been developing with your modules and, and testing and doing a lot of stuff around it since that path. And it has been a really cool way to do it because we have learned a lot. We, I think we can, we have contributed in a certain way to your community and we're really happy with this uh, kind of collaboration. It is amazing to to hear like those stories, like how you you begin just like buying a device in AliExpress and then you find that like all that support from our company that allows you to to develop cool words that are already uh, being sold for the market. And you mentioned the best one, but you give us an introduction to the frontier. So can you? Talk a little bit more about the bus one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. We we in electronic, in electronic Cat have have this uh, development, development family, family well, development family, family, which is which called is called bus bus uh, because because bus one. one. Don't, uh, uh, this uh, is uh, the of the cats. Of the cats. Uh, this goddess of the cats uh, it was from ancient uh, Egypt uh, culture, and we decided to put it like. This is the god of the of the development boards because it's all around cats, you know. And we decide to this uh, to do this development board because there's a lot of development boards for Lora, but these boards has always like one microcontroller and then my module which has the microcontroller and also the 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 the, the Lora mod the, the Lora chip. So you have a lot of things going and it's like. Uh, really expensive because you have two microcontrollers doing a lot of stuff in each way and we decided to to get involved uh, with Brack because they had this module based on a chip from 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 microchip called sam r34 i think sam r34 i think i i don't remember 34 but, yeah yeah okay <laughs> thank you and since we look for that uh, module we thought okay rag is doing a lot of stuff but they don't have like a, a a development for a development board for makers and the solutions that uh, smartphone adafruit and also uh, arduino uh, offer always have two microcontrollers or for example they have one microcontroller on the radio but it's like pretty big and the microcontroller it's not that low power that we would like to so <clears throat> with this board, we try to do a good collaboration around Rack and us, where we publish the, the board as an open source board and because it's just like a carrier for the model. And and to allow well, well and to allow uh, Rack and us to sell the board as a, a as a development for board for any maker who is, who is a, already familiar with the Arduino ecosystem or the uh, platform IO ecosystem, which already, it, it, right now, the, the platform IO ecosystem, it's not implemented, but we are looking forward to, to, to implement the, the platform IO ecosystem. But, well, uh, these boards are just focused on development. For example, with Rack, we are going through this development of IoT and also IoT with machine learning on microcontrollers uh, with the vast frontier and with the vast one we want the, the the we want this board to be sell like a IoT board which is really cheap and it has a lot of advantages around around it. Also in electronic arts we have different bus for example it is coming the bus M4 which is which has a really 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 new microcontroller from me STM3 STM32 
And also we have this more basic, which is the Bass Pro Mini, which is a it's, it's a, a board which is based on Pro, the Arduino Pro Mini form factor because Arduino stopped selling the bus, the Pro Mini uh, the Pro Mini um, board, and you can only find right now the Chinese version. So we wanted to get the uh, advantages of that and just sell this Bass Pro Mini uh, same form factor and compatibility compatibility with all the pins with the SAMD21 microcontroller inside. Super, that is super interesting. Thanks for for sharing us a little bit more about the the products that you have been developed with Rack products, and it is pretty nice to 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 highlight this kind of collaboration with the with the maker community, like trying to to make open source project for everyone out there who want to start thinking with IoT project, which is, is pretty pretty nice. So I think yeah, for finish like with the session, uh, I would like to highlight something. October is the month of the open hardware, and Electronic Cat is joining the global celebration of the App Open Source Hardware Association. And they are making an event aimed to the Spanish speakers who are commenting a lot of things in the in the chats that we have to the, to make a Spanish version of this interview. <laughs> uh, so I have a good news for you guys. Uh, tomorrow there is an event uh, that you all are invited. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about what is this event about? What are the topics that the speakers will be sharing? I know that there are well-known speakers in the Spanish uh, speaking hardware community. Among them, David Cuartelletes, who is co-founder of Arduino, and also Cesar Garcia, founder of Laura Maker, a pretty cool podcast. <laughs> and there are many more speakers invited. Can you share us a little bit more about this? this event yeah sure. yeah sure we started, we started this, this, event, this event, event a year ago, a year ago. and it was and it was all look we we wanted, we wanted to be bigger bigger because, because it's a lot of areas right, right now in, in, in all mexico, mexico in US, the world, the world. Focus, focus on, on but there but there, there, there is like, like, like just focus just focus on open hardware uh, development there's uh, this uh, event in which is like one year, uh, one year of of, of years old, uh, which is KeyCon, which is also in, intended to to do all the all the hardware stuff, but it's all for KeyCat. And here in Electronic Arts, we uh, we try to be, do this uh, this event of Open Hardware Month, which is based on any open hardware that you have. Not no, it doesn't matter if it is Silkwit Maker, if it's Altium, if it is whatever you wanted. But if you wanted to share with us, and and you wanted to be open, you should came with with to this event. Uh, why did we wanted to do this? Because we want to create or 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 to get together all the community because there's a lot of people doing this stuff, but it is better when you know the other people who are doing this stuff and you get better ideas around all the all the other people and you can uh, you can learn from there or from them or they can learn from you and there's a lot of, of good stuff going on right so yeah this this year for obvious reasons about the covid we decided to do it uh, in 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 a, in a online shape uh, this event so we decided to invite people I, from, people all, from all. a lot uh, a lot of spanish uh, spanish talking um, countries <laughs> so for example david cuartieles which is the co-founder of arduino which, which he has this abierto.cc uh, which is another uh, association where he is trying to get involved into more open source uh, hardware uh, projects and and also for example this uh, cesar garcia which is the, this maker, uh, the Laura Maker uh, podcast, <laughs> as you said, uh, podcaster. Uh, <laughs> uh, they want to share more ideas from, for example, from Spain, of how they are making these communities with our communities, right? And for example, here in Mexico, we invited a lot of people who 
who who knows a lot of of things about Huawei because all their experience and they know how to share some kind of well they know how to share some some project and uh, another day but they do not share it right but they have they know how to share it and how to teach another another pe another people to 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 learn about that so right now uh, we have all settled down we are ready to to do it tomorrow we hope that everyone uh, everyone likes and get interest on the on the on the speakers we have a lot of different people people that make music and and do it in an open source way i mean they they are from argentina and they do this design around midi controllers for musicians and also and they had a, a really big development web development where you can you can configure your own order and it's really a really really beautiful project and also we have this guy from from guatemala which is like starting this idea of sharing because in guatemala it's like in mexico the this idea of i'm the guy who has the ideas and i'm the guy on, that only can do these ideas uh, this kind of approach of engineering where the egos are too high and you cannot share you cannot learn you can you cannot know anything about about other people because you will steal the, his idea which is like an arduino with an led but they think that it's a good idea but well they are trying to push this uh, sharing content and then this share our idea of how to how to contribute with the, the community and yeah, I, I I'm pretty really, I'm pretty really excited about this 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 event tomorrow, and we will be there. Maria also will be there talking about all the development with Rack with Duo a technology, which is a really interesting for interesting platform for doing a modular uh, development for IoT yeah. and and get and get in a prototype. So I'm really, I'm really excited. excited. Also, also. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the WIS blog tomorrow. Actually, I prepared the presentation based on that I didn't have the kit in my hands. And 30 minutes before this session, I get it. You can see it here. <laughs> so I have to change my presentation because I would like to present something tomorrow. I got a real demo. Let's see if I can make it. I hope. Uh, I'm going to try my best. If not, you can see, check a, a demo <laughs> in next week. Um, yo, so yeah, everyone is invited. Uh, those who are asking about the about a Spanish sure. event, yeah, tomorrow is going to be a great day for that. It, we're going to be all the day uh, at the event. So please join everyone who who wants to learn more about open source hardware, cool projects, and also tips and tricks about how to get started in this world. So just to finish, I will ask question. Do you have any message to our community of makers and aspiring startups like yourself? Uh, what will it be? Well, well first, first of, of all, all, thank you, thank for, you for all, all the people who contribute and, and also, also issues, issues to, to get better product to get a product in a better way. way. Also, also for, for being, being here, here getting, getting interested in this in part. part um I would, I would like, like to say develop, develop get mistakes, get mistakes <laughs> get done, get done uh, get I mean I mean for getting done don't you need to get, get to a lot, a lot of mistakes you, you get, get you, you need to get, get a lot of good, good stuff, stuff you need you need to be, to be ready, ready for everything. everything we have to be ready for everything <laughs> Yeah, that is how this this world works. Uh, I'm seeing like a few questions on the on the chat, but Vladislav, who is part of the RAC team, is helping them out. So thanks, Vladislav, to giving us a help during the chat. So I'm not going to jump to any question here. So thanks for sharing off all your knowledge and the incredible insights about iot and electronics and the solution that you have been developed i am sure that the amazing projects you told us about today will be 
a great interest for our community members. And thank you for taking the time to talk with us and to share a, a little bit about your experience, all the things that you and the team behind Electronic Cat have done is incredible. Please never stop, keep doing amazing things. And also I want to thank everyone who is connected, those who are who ask questions, those who are pushing around that we will have to make Spanish versions of these sessions. Um, and yeah, uh, also to those who stay during the entire session, because no one, um, no most of the people stay during the entire session during this kind of event. So thanks as well. If you are watching this video later and you have any doubt about something, about a product, about a project, feel free to, to leave your comments or questions in the comment section as well. And Guero, Jose and I will be super happy to uh, answer any question you may have. I don't know, Jose, if you want to add something. No, thank you no, very thank much. It was a great, 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 great session. session. Uh, always good always to, good to uh, have a new, new company who are working with that. Uh, especially, especially yours. yours. And I, I love your product. <laughs> I passed past one here, and, and, and <laughs> I'm looking for the next one. Well. I am waiting. Well, I am waiting for for receiving my open hardware um, kit. Yeah, and Andres Salas told me that I am going to receiving some surprises. So I am excited about it. <laughs> Let's see what I what I am going to get. So yeah, this is all for today's session. We hope to see you next time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.